Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little starfish. And this is actually Peach from the movie Finding Nemo. So, this little guy was designed by the very talented Janet Gottney, and she was gracious enough to share this pattern with me so I could make a tutorial. So, this is the one I'm going to be showing you in the video. I also have another one that I made. So for this one I used the Rainbow Loom Pink Pearl Rubber Bands. So you can see it's got this shimmery look to it. And I think it turned out really cool. To make your starfish you're going to need some type of stuffing. So I have polyfill. You'll need a hook. So I'm using the Rainbow Loom Metal Hook but you could also use a crochet hook. I'm going to be using a twist tie to help me get my magic ring started or if you happen to have the loomy loom you could use that. So both of those are optional but you will find them very helpful in getting that magic ring started. You'll need something for your eyes so I have the six millimeter black safety eyes and if you didn't have those you could use a six millimeter bead or somewhere around that size or if you didn't have those you could also use rubber bands. You're going to need several clips or stitch markers and then as far as your band counts go you're going to need approximately 725 pink and two black. I'm going to begin by making one half of the body so that is a circle and we're going to make two of these. So I'm going to show you how to do the first one and then you can do the second one on your own. So it starts with a magic ring of five. So for that you're going to need six rubber bands. I do have a twist tied to help me get my magic ring started. Or if you have the loomy loom, you can use that. You'd want to use the one that has five fins. So if you are using the twist tie, you just want to put it right next to your hook and then you're going to take your first band and you're going to triple this. So it just goes on, twist, back on, make sure it gets over both sections, twist, and back on one more time. Then just pull your twist tie up and bend that in half. And all that's doing is just helping to keep those three loops together and then it just gives you something to grab onto. So if you didn't have the twist tie or the loomy loom, you could just triple the band on your hook and then you would just use your fingers to pinch those three loops. And then you're going to have five bands left. You're just going to pull through the first one, get it back on your hook. You'll have two loops. One pulls through the other. And then from front to back, push through. Make sure you're going through all three loops. Pull through your second band and from now on you'll have the three loops. And then one through the other two. So always front to back, here's my third band. Fourth. And then the last one. I'm gonna remove the twist tie. And I'm gonna use my clip, or you could use a stitch marker, and just place it on the band that's on your hook. So you may notice that the bands are kind of towards one side. So just take a second and try and even them out around the circle. And then you should have five stitches. And a stitch is the little sideways V that's on the outer edge of your magic ring. So if you count them, there's one, two, three, four. And then the last one's always going to be on your hook. So in this row, that's number five. You'll need 10 bands for row two, and we're doing an increase in every stitch. So you're just going to go around to your first stitch, and I'm always going in a counterclockwise direction. Take my first band, go through, back on, three loops, one through the other two. And then we're going back through that same stitch a second time, that's for an increase, and loop. So next stitch over, again we're doing two in each. So we really want this to widen out here. 
Next stitch, again an increase. Just continue to do that all the way around here. So we definitely want this to flatten out. And as I said, this is the body section. So one of these is going to form the front, and then the other one is going to form the back. Now when you're at the end of your row here, you're just going to take your clip and move it to the band that's on your hook. So now we should have doubled our stitch count. So if you count around your stitches, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then number 10 is on your hook. In row three, you're going to need 20 bands, and again, we're doing an increase in every stitch. So, same thing as we did in the last row. We're just going to go around to every stitch, and we're going to do two in each. So, again, we're really trying to widen this out, because you want the front and the back to be relatively flat and it's not going to really matter which piece is the front and which piece is the back when you're making it because they're going to be identical So you may notice as you're forming this that it might curve in just slightly, but when you double the stitch count it usually tends to lay relatively flat. So I think when I'm done this row I'm going to just use my fingers and try and flatten it out a bit. And here's my last one where the clip is. You'll need 30 bands for row 4, and we're following the pattern of 1, 2, 1, 2. So you can see we're doing an increase in every other stitch. So we're doing one single crochet in the first stitch. And then in the second stitch we have an increase. And then we're just going to continue to repeat that. So a single in the third. and then an increase in the fourth, and so on. So this is actually the last row that we're going to be widening it out. There is going to be one additional row, but this is going to get it to about as wide as it needs to be. So again, you might see a slight curve, but it should lay relatively flat. And you also may notice that the stitches may seem a little bit more squished together because we are trying to fit pretty many stitches right near one another. So 
So we're just about back to the start here. And then in the very last one where my clip is, it's going to be an increase. So again, I'm just going to try and flatten that out. You'll need 30 bands for row 5, and we're going to do a slightly different stitch and this one's known as the front post single crochet. So up until now we've been going into a stitch from front to back and going under both loops. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually push down through a stitch and I am going to go through the same one where my last single crochet was. So I'm going to push through that again but now what I'm going to do is come back through the next stitch over. And you'll see this little part pop up on your hook, and that's what's considered a post. So since we're going from front to back and then back in, it's considered a front post. If we were starting from the outside, it would be considered a back post. So you're just going to pull under, back on your hook, you'll have your three loops, and one through the other two. So it's really quite simple. You're always going to go down through the same one you just came back up. So you're pushing out through that same one, and then in the next one over, you're pushing back in. You'll see that post pop right up on your hook. You're just going to pull the band under, and then one through the other two. Again, through the same one you just came in. So back out, and then back in. And you should really notice that post pop up on your hook. If for some reason it looks off, you should know that you're not quite where you need to be, but you should see those two bands that are in a vertical direction. And again, that's considered the post. So really that's all there is to it. And you'll definitely notice a difference with where your stitches are going to wind up because these are going to basically change direction and will be more to the top of your circle rather than on the side like when you do a regular single crochet. And as you're forming this, don't worry if your circle seems kind of misshapen because we're going to fix that when we're done. It does sort of tend to make it buckle as you're forming this. But that is definitely normal. This is actually the same stitch that I used when I made my layer cake. It's a nice way to change direction. And it looked really neat with the different color icing and then it allowed me to grow the cake down. So we're almost back to the start here. Looks like I have four left.
Here's my very last one. Should get you right back to where your clip is. And I'm just going to take that. And now, as I said, you can see how it sort of made this curl in. So I'm just going to take a second and work my fingers around here and try and get it relatively flat once again. So what you're going to do is to pause your video here and then you're going to go back and make another identical circle. So I'm not going to film this, but I will add the time to go back to if you feel like you need to follow along with each of the steps once again. Next I'm going to show you how to make one of the arms. So that's going to begin with a magic ring of three. So I have my four pink bands and then my twist tie and my clip. So the same way that we started the first magic ring, we're going to put the twist tie if you have one. You're going to triple your first band. And then this time we're only having three bands to pull through. So that's one. Two. And three. Now, when you have such a small magic ring, it's really hard to get the bands to go evenly around the circle. You can see they're all bunched to the one half. So you can just try your best to even those out, but it is definitely going to be tough. And then just attach your clip. In row two, you need six bands, and we're doing an increase in every stitch. So I think when you have a really tiny magic ring, it makes it kind of hard to see your stitches because they're all scrunched together. So you can see that I have the band on my hook, and the first stitch is going to be around in that clockwise direction. It's going to be kind of far over because we, um, we have such a small magic ring but you want to go under your two loops for your first stitch and then you're going to do an increase so that's one and then get back under that same stitch and there's two now moving over again you can always just try and pull this apart just to get a better view of your stitches. Here's the next one. And we're doing two in that. Hopefully you can get a view of what I'm doing here. And then the last one's going to be easy because your clip is on it. So at least that one's easy to spot. I'm going to just take my clip off for now so you can see what I'm doing here. So again, you're going to do two in that. And then what I like to do, at least till it builds out some, is when I'm done each part here, I just take my fingers and just kind of spread it apart so I'm able to see my stitches better for the next row. In row three, you'll need six bands, and we're doing one single crochet into each stitch. So you should have a little bit better view of your stitches here. And we're just going to do, do one in each stitch. And again, if you're having a hard time to see, don't hesitate to spread that apart, and that will help open up your stitches. And get my clip out of the way there. So here's number five. And again, number six is where my clip is. You'll need nine bands for row four and we're doing a one two one two pattern. 
So we're doing that every other increase. We're starting with a single and then an increase in the second stitch. And then just keep repeating. So it should just be gradually starting to widen here for you. And then again, don't hesitate to just sort of spread these out after each row. As you can see, your stitches nice and clearly. In row five, you're going to need nine bands. And once again, it's one single crochet into each. So this should be pretty straightforward. So after this, we're going to do another row of widening, and then that's going to be our last row for making it spread out, and then we'll have several rows of one in each to do. You'll need 12 bands for a 6, and you can see the pattern is 2 singles followed by an increase, and we're going to repeat that pattern 3 times in total. So this time we're just spacing out our increase a little bit. So we have a single in the first, a single in the second, and then an increase in the third. And you're just going to repeat that pattern two more times here. So once again, we're just gradually trying to widen this. And then, as I said, this is actually our last row of making it wider. And then we're going to do a bunch of rows of single crochet. Looks like I'm caught. There we go. And then once again, we have our final increase where our stitch marker is. In rows 7 through 11, we're going to do just one single crochet into each stitch. So you'll need a total of 12 bands for each one of those five rows. So since it's pretty straightforward, I'm going to go ahead and let you do those five rows on your own. And I will see you back here shortly. Once you've completed one of your arms, what you're going to do is go back and follow the pattern again. And you're going to create four more. So you can pause your video here and do that now. And once again, I'm going to add the time to go back to if you feel like you need to follow along with the video to do the steps once again. Once you have all seven pieces formed, then it's time for us to stitch everything together. So if you wanted to, you could take each of the loose ends, take one additional band, and go to the next stitch over, tie that off with a slip knot. But what I like to do is to just work my loose bands into my creation. I'm going to start by connecting half of each of the arms to one of the circles, and this is going to be the back of the starfish. So I have a total of 31 bands, so 30 are going to be used to stitch it together, and then the last one is going to be to tie it off. So I'm going to take my first circle. Now this is the side that was facing you as you were forming this. 
and we want this to actually be the outside so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start you can see here where my loose band is I'm going to go to the next stitch over so if you look to the outer edge we actually have two sets of stitches there's the stitch that's on the outer edge here that was the last row of single crochet and then there's this other stitch that's facing more downward and that was formed by doing that front post single crochet so what we're actually going to do is pick up the inside loop of each of those rows so if you just look right across the top here I'm going to push from front to back again it's the one that's right after the loose band here so I'm going to go through the inner loop of the outer row and also the inner loop of the other row and then I'm going to take my first arm and I want the opening to be above so I'm just attaching it to the lower half so I'm going to take my loose band as well and attach that so wherever your last stitch was go to your next empty stitch push through that and then I'm going to take my loose band and attach that. I'm going to take my first rubber band, I'm going to pull through that loose band and then the stitch of the arm and then I'm also pulling through the two loops on the body. Get the other end back on and pull one through the other. I'm going to go over to the next one. Again, I'm going through that inner loop. It's going to be pretty much straight across the top. And then that loop that we had just attached on the arm, that stitch that we're going to go through. Pull through those two sets of stitches. Get the other end back on. So you're going to have three loops and one through the other two. So we're going to do six on each arm. So again, next stitch over, inner loop of each of those rows. Now your next stitch over. So this is going to be number three. Pull through each of those stitches and then one through the other two. Here's number four. Make sure you get under both loops. And if you feel like as you're pulling through, your hook is not going through smoothly or it's getting caught up, if you pull down as you're pulling through, it's going to help that to slide through a little bit easier. Under the next two loops. So this is number five, and then one more, just make sure you look which ones you've already gone through. So it's this next one over, and this is going to be my last one for this first arm. So now you can see how this is connected. And then right away we're going to start on the second arm. So just move to the next two loops. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the first open stitch after my loose band. I'm going to push through. And then also I'm going to grab that loose loop. Take off my clip. So this is going to be my first and the second arm. Pull through the stitches. Next one over. I think sometimes it's a little bit harder to see where you're going through. Again, this one we just attached on the arm is the stitch we're going under. It's number two. Have 
four, five, then here's the last one for the second arm. And then you can see how that has attached. So we'll just go to the very next one over. Here's my third arm. Again, the first open stitch. Grab your loop. So there's one. Again, you're going under the one you just attached for the second one. It's important that you don't skip that one. So we need that to have our stitch count of 12. So that's three. Four, five, and six. So we have three done. Next one over. I'm going to start on that fourth arm, sew through the stitch, and then the loose band, whoops, jumped off my hook there, so that's one. under the band we just attached two three four and six. And now we're down to our last one. So if I did this correctly, the stitch count should work out evenly. And we should have six stitches left. Grab my last loose band here. So that's one under the loop that we just connected, two, three, four, five, and then I have one more here, so I'm going to go through the inner loop here, and then I have this loose band, remember when we first started, so I'm going to grab that, and then I'm going to go through the next stitch over, and 
And then I have one additional band I'm going to use to tie this off. So I'm just going to go through this last stitch that we just attached. And I'm going to pull through everything on my hook. And then make a really nice and tight slip knot. And then what I'm going to do is just reach up from the inside here. It doesn't really matter exactly where. Just go under a couple of loops. And then just grab that loop and pull it through to the inside. So you don't have to worry about getting it totally hidden. But you just want it to make sure that it's not going to poke out your edge. The next thing I'm going to do is to add the stuffing to each of the arms. So they are kind of small openings, so you just want to take little pieces at a time. I like to just use my pinky and kind of stuff it in there and get it up to the top. And you definitely don't want to overfill these. I think they're kind of neat when they're a little bit more floppy. And you definitely don't want to have a lot of stuffing poking out the bottom so that you're having to fight it when you're doing the next sets of stitches. So you're just going to continue around and just fill each one of your arms. I think I need just a tiny bit more. So just continue around until all of your arms are filled. The next thing we're going to do is to make the face. So I have one pink band I'm going to use to tie off this loose band. I have two black bands we're going to use to make the mouth. And then I have these 6mm safety eyes. So this is what the back part looks like that attaches on the inside. I happen to only have one of those. I don't know how I lost the other one. But the part on the circle here, this part here, is what was facing you as you were forming it. That's actually going to be the inside. So what I'm going to do, first off, is to get this back on my hook. I'm just going to go under the next loop or two and take my pink band through everything. I'm just going to go ahead and tie that off. Take off my clip and then I'm just going to go through a couple bands on the inside and I'm going to pull this down just so it's out of our way. And then as I said this side is actually going to be the outside of the face and what I'm going to do is go to the center here where the magic ring is and I'm going to go just slightly over to the right to this next stitch. I'm going to push out through and then I'm going to skip the next stitch and go to that next one over. And then I'm going to take a black band. I'm going to pull through. Get the other end back on my hook. Take my second band and I'm going to Pull one end through the other and make a nice and tight slip knot. So that's what's going to be our little mouth. So you can adjust it into more of like an open mouth or a smile. And then for the eyes, if you have the safety eyes, you would just stick them through. You could also use beads or rubber bands. So you can just see where you think the placement looks the best and push them through and then you would just attach the other end. The final thing we need to do is to stitch on the face to the body. So I have 31 bands for that. So what you're going to do is just to set your face right inside here and you want to make sure that it's lined up nice and straight so we have six stitches across an arm so there's not going to be an exact center point but you have the third and fourth stitch are going to be in the middle 
So if you just look where you've placed your eyes and everything in the center, you just want to make sure that those line up. And we have six stitches across an arm, like I said. So I'm going to actually leave this one empty for now because I'm going to have to stuff the face. But if I consider this the third and fourth stitch of the upper arm, then this would be stitch, let me get my hook, this would be stitch five and six. So it's this next one over that would start the next arm. So what we're going to do a little bit differently is we're only going to go in this outer stitch before we had gone through one of each of the loops, but this time we're going through just this outer stitch. So that's going to be the first one that's going to connect. Now you might have to look to the side just to see which stitches you went through and which ones you didn't. You can see that we had gone through this one, so this next one over here is my first empty stitch. So just try not to get the stuffing caught. So now I've gone through both sets of stitches. And I'm going to pull through everything. And then do one through the other. So now it's just a matter of going through the stitch on the face. Again, make sure you're going through just that outer stitch through both loops of that same stitch. And then through the arm stitch. And you're going to pull that under back on. So now you're going to have three loops and one through the other two. So just take your time. Make sure you're making it under both sets of stitches. As I said, just try not to get the stuffing caught up. And this time it should be a little bit easier too because we don't have the loose bands to have to contend with. Again, if you feel like you're getting caught, if you just sort of pull as you're going through. So I should have been counting to make sure I did six. Let me see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm on to the next arm here. Again, turn it to the side. You can see we've gone through this one. So it's the next one over here. It's going to be our first. So that's two. Three. five and it might look a little bit sort of wonky there at the bottom where our back post single head connected it might not look completely smooth there but I do need to go under this stitch on the face and then I have one more stitch on the arm And that's number six. And then we have the next stitch on the face. Go to the next arm. Make sure you're going into an open stitch, the very next one. And I'm going to pull through my first. And then here's number two. And then here's three. Four. Five. And six. And then we're on to the next. So here's one, two, 
to Four, five, and six. And then what I'm going to do is pause here. Let me just add a clip. Because what we're going to do before we attach the very last arm is we're going to stuff the face. So once again, you don't need a whole lot but you definitely want to fill this out and you can still reach into the arms if you want to add any other stuffing to where the arm openings are. They are still open so you can use your finger and push some of the stuffing in there if you need to. So I'm just going to the next stitch over on the face and then the next one over here on the arm. So I can take my clip out now. That was one. Two. Three, four, five, and six. So I have my last additional band, and I'm just going to use this to tie off. So I'm going to go through the next stitch and you will notice there's just a little bit of a gap in between the arms. So what I'm going to do is just grab a loop from the back and then I'm going to pull through everything. Oops, I just lost it there. Try not to get the stuffing stuck in there, which I just did a little bit. Let's try this again here through everything and then make a really nice and tight slip knot and then you can just go ahead and hide this inside and then if you did notice any gaps in between which I said there is just a little bit if that bothered you you could take an additional pink rubber band for example, this one looks like a little bit of a bigger gap. You could just go through stitches on either side and take that additional pink band. Make a nice and tight slip knot and then just reach up and pull that through to the inside. So it's up to you. I don't think it's very noticeable. In some spots, it's really not noticeable at all. And then your peach is complete. So you can do some adjusting to the arms if you want to. If you want to just curve the arms in one direction or the other. I feel like when you look at pictures, they're kind of curved. So it's totally up to you how you want to pose your peach. I hope that everyone loves their new starfish, and I'd like to thank Janet for sharing this awesome pattern. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. You can post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page, and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, so that way you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to post your pictures and comments there too. I love to see what everyone's working on and get people's feedback. And you can also subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!